Church of the Holy Trinity, we are so glad you're here. Today is a baptismal feast day, one of four that the church celebrates. It is the feast of the baptism of our Lord. Uh, just one more announcement. Please mark your calendars. The annual parish meeting will be held in person this year on January 23. That's two weeks. The meeting will happen about an hour after church is over, so feel free to grab lunch somewhere and then come back. Um, we'll get started just as soon as both rectors are here. It should be about 12 p.m. We'll be holding the vestry elections and talking about the past year and the upcoming year. Um, we hope you can make it. I invite you to join me in taking a few deep breaths to arrive from all the places that we've been since we were last together and center our hearts and minds in the presence of Christ. Again, welcome. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. 
There is one hope from God all to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. and call us by name. May your flame-born spirit open the heavens that we might recognize you in the one born of earth, Jesus Christ, the gift of peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah. Now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring you offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not behold. Bring my son from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our song appointed for this morning is Psalm 29, if we could read this responsibly by verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you God, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of the holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks down the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. May the Lebanon skip like a cow, and not burn like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the old trees out, and strips the forest there. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits in throne above the flood. The Lord sits in throne with his king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. Now, when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Gospel 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandal. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. In the name of a God who seeks us out. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Did any of you celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany this past week on January 6th? Most churches are our size don't have a service on January 6th. It's an evening service midweek, and for whatever reason, doesn't have the significance for most of us that Ash Wednesday or Maundy Thursday has. So, it may have been a while, if ever, that many of you have celebrated the Feast of the Epiphany, except for when it falls on a Sunday. Of course, the story, right? The astrologers, the non-Jewish astrologers, the very Gentile wise men, walk many miles following the star to see baby Jesus. You know the story, right? The Christ child, and to pay him homage, not only as the king of the Jewish people, but the king over all other kingdoms. It's a big claim and a big deal. And liturgically, the epiphany sets the stage for the rest of the life of Jesus and his ministry. Christmas Eve, we had the birth narrative. Christmas one was John's prologue, in the beginning was the word, and all of that. Christmas two, we had Jesus as an adolescent, getting lost, perhaps running away from his parents to sit in the temple, asking questions and increasing his theological understandings and expanding the theological understandings of those around him. Then the epiphany and the claim that this human is in fact the physical representative of the king of the universe. And today, in the Gospel reading, we move into the baptism of Jesus. And this baptism is mysterious, right? What's going on in the text? How do we understand this as Episcopalians? The baptism isn't a one-to-one -one connection with us and our baptisms, is it? In fact, it creates numerous theological questions and some confusion. I'm actually not going to answer those <laughs> confusions or questions today. Uh, but for our purposes today, I want to focus on a couple of other points in the readings. First off, in the Gospel, John is preaching his message of repentance and baptism to the crowds in Luke. The people hear these words, their hearts are compelled, and in this text, John baptizes them. They have expectations that Jesus will also come and change things in the near future, and that he will be coming with fire and judgment. Oof. Not in a hell, fire and brimstone kind of way, but instead in a way that levels systems and brings justice and equity to the nations. Secondly, the reading from Acts is kind of the result of all of these things for the early apostles and the beginning of the church. Because of the incarnation and the development of the Christ child into the Christ teen, and finally the fully formed adult Christ at the baptism, we are able to hear the good news that the apostles in Jerusalem, Christian headquarters, that these apostles are spreading the love and good news of Jesus. And we hear that the good people of Samaria, otherwise known as the Good Samaritans, have accepted the word of God, also known as the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and how it has changed the world forever. 
and how that translates into a new understanding of love and life. But because the apostles have heard this news of the Samaritans, they respond by sending two representatives, Peter and John. And the representatives go to Samaria. And I'm sure they reinforce Jesus' message of love for all and his message of justice for all. Love and justice, even for those in Samaria. And since they had already been baptized with water, Peter and John laid their hands on these Samaritan individuals. Similarly, perhaps to the ways that the bishop might have laid his or her hands on you when you were confirmed and commissioned in a special way. Were any of you confirmed and can remember what the hands of the bishop felt like? Who's been confirmed? Either in this church or another. Yeah. Do you remember what the, the bishop's hands felt like? Who was the bishop? Do you remember? Who? Bishop McGee. McGee. Neil? Were his hands heavy or her hands heavy? Were they warm? Were they cold? Do you remember? They were spiritual. They are spiritual, okay. I wonder if the way that you felt, if you've been confirmed, at your confirmation is how the Samaritans felt when Peter and John put their hands on them. As they similarly invited the Holy Spirit to inhabit them in a special way to carry out the mission and ministry of Jesus. I wonder if they could feel the Holy Spirit present as those heavy hands touched each of them. The same Holy Spirit that was present at the baptism of Jesus, that descended like a dove. The same Holy Spirit that was present with you at your baptism and at your confirmation. At my baptism and my confirmation. And at my ordination to the diaconate and the priesthood. The same Holy Spirit that is present with us right now, today. And I wonder, are there people in our community that, like the Samaritans, have not heard the good news of love yet? Or are there people out there who, like the Samaritans, have heard the good news about love and in response want to partner with us in mission and ministry in Manistee? I wonder. And I wonder if we might find them along the side of the road in dire straits in the most difficult part of their lives, like the Good Samaritan finds folks. And I wonder if we'll be able to present with these Samaritans, to be present with these Samaritans and go the extra mile to help, to be useful. I wonder. Because if we are able to be present in the lives of those struggling, because of our own baptisms, because we are compelled by the work of the Holy Spirit through our own baptisms, then we will see the fruits of that labor. Not only present in helping our neighbors, but these folks will respond to our love, to the love of God with their own love. My friends, this is the gospel. This is the good news. This is the work that the Holy Spirit has called you into. Amen. stand. On baptismal feast days, instead of the creed, we go over our baptismal promises. So church, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, of the Lord, He lives in the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and died on the side do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will pass God's help. Will you preserve, uh, persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will. That does help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will. That does help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. That does help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will. That does help. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. 
In our prayer cycle of prayers, we pray for Mike and Kathleen Halliday, Bob and Phyllis Hayes, Rich and Louise Henthorne, Hope and John Hogan, the families we serve at the Baby Pantry. We lift up our elected leaders of the parish for vestry members and officers. Susan, Mike, Carol, Corey, Jamie, Jim, and Mary. We also pray for the people, mission, and ministry of our local churches. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for all those in our diocese concerning calls to the ministry, both lay and ordained. In particular, we pray for all those in our diocese preparing for the sacred order of priests, including Alicia, Joe, Natalie, Alex, Derek, Rebecca, Matt, Joanna, Kurt, and Anne-Marie. We pray for those in our diocese preparing for the sacred order of deacons, including Joy, Trish, Mark, Jim, and Linda. We remember with gratitude the retired clergy of the diocese. We also pray for the mission and ministry of St. John's Alma, Doug Ballard, Senior Warden, St. James Albion, Jocelyn McWhorter, Senior Warden. You may now offer your own petitions and thanksgiving, either with your lips or in your heart. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city wherewith the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and in thought, word, and need, by what we have done, and by what we have done by the one done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be light in your world. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, y'all. Peace, y'all. Please know that at this church there is no one who is ineligible or unwelcome to celebrate Eucharist at God's table. Our altar is the table of our loving God, a table set to feed all of creation through the love of Jesus Christ. You who are a part of that creation are most welcome and indeed invited to partake. For those joining from home today, when it comes time for communion, because you can't be here with us in person, we invite you to pray the prayer for spiritual communion, which we've included in the bulletin on page 16. And now offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, in your mercy, said Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. No. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of unending, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we serve a loving God, and therefore we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not the temptation, but deliver us from evil.
is the body of Christ for Adam. This is the body of Christ for Adam. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage. in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.